Okay guys, back here on the 3600 project. <clears throat> we have finally had some success. We got the motor freed up. <clears throat> the clutch is still pretty well stuck. It's gonna be real aggravating to free up. I messed around, I didn't bring my, got the tripod, just don't have the mount to hook the camera to the tripod. So try to sit here and hold this thing. I might be able to spin this thing with this pry bar, it doesn't. Kind of hard to engage. There, turn a little bit. Still a little tough to turn though. So one thing we did find is that the starter was pretty well locked up itself. So we took it out to a local supplier around here, Rex Battery, they rebuilt it. And even put new gear and everything in it. The gear that was on it was pretty rusted up. As you can see the flywheel is pretty rough looking itself. I am anxious to get that on there. I still have the injectors out. I do want to get the starter on, see if the starter's got enough power to pull it. Uh, can't really see it real well, but there's a little trail of oil here. So we were able to get it in high range, fourth gear, eighth gear, technically. And we were able to hook a, hook a chain to the front of it and pull it with our other little New Holland tractor. And it freed up and started turning. So there is a leak though on this power steering cylinder. And as, as the engine was turning and the pump was turning, it was puking oil out the cylinder. So I've got to get this cylinder off. That's my task for tonight. Try to reach in there. I got one line loose. I get this other line loose. And then it'll be take this bolt on the back off. That bolt right there, and see if we can get her off. See what's wrong with it. I'll touch back when I get get it off, since I don't have a mount for the, the tripod. Okay, I just want to show my setup for popping this loose. There's probably stuff out there. These little tapered joints. But basically, run this nut out till the nut's just a little bit proud. Smack that in with a hammer. This one back here is a little more aggravating. I tried putting a pry bar down in here, prying and tapping on, tapping on this. Didn't work out, so I ended up getting a little block of steel, taking this cap off. I ran that nut out to where it's sitting proud on that, so the nut's actually pushing up against the block in the case. And I stuck this old pin I had in here and just knocked that in. That actually worked out real well. Only took about two hits. So that's how you break these taper presses, press fits loose. Okay, got the cylinder laying up here on the battery tray. It appears that it must have gotten water down in it at some point and it froze and, and bust, bust the side of the cylinder out. Cause that's about where the the piston inside this thing is probably riding most of the time. I don't think there's any fix in that. I mean, if I just wanted to make it functional where the tractor wouldn't leak, I could hammer that back in place and stitch some weld across it so that I could run it without leaking oil everywhere, but that cylinder wouldn't function right. So I'm going to see about getting a new cylinder. I think they're fairly pricey from the last time I looked, though, I believe. Do some digging around tonight on the old interweb and see what we could find. See if there's a part number on this thing or not. It doesn't appear so. But you can see it then. Bulged out real good. It's definitely got a, a quite a bulge in it. And when I was 
when I got it broke loose from, from this end as I was compressing it, it was shooting out. Looks like a mix of water and rust. So I'm, I'm pretty sure, certain that's what happened. It got water in it and froze up. So on to the next tech challenge. Okay, so I sat here and figured, what the hell. I'll try to weld repair this thing, just sort of using the auto body style, just really small spot tacking it in. So there's the crack now. I hammered it down to get it flushed up, but I still left it a little crowned. Because as you weld this thing, this welds real hot and the steel around it's real cold. So when you weld it, it will automatically contract some, and I think it will pull that bulge. And it's, it was just, I left just a hair of a bulge in it from the previous one. I got them real well lined up, really, but left a little bit of a, a bulge, hoping the weld will actually pull it down. So there's my spots. I'm gonna take it over to the grinder, and grind this smooth, and, and check for cracks, and go again, probably, if I have to. I'm sure I will. Okay, just got back from the grinder. Let's see if it'll focus in. There are still some little small pinholes. So we'll make another pass. Add some more weld. Okay, a bunch of spot ends later. And a little bit of grinding. It doesn't look too bad. It does have some little pinholes. And it's just really overlap. I think I did actually put some acetone down in the the ports here and I rolled the cylinder over and I didn't see anything coming through. And again, it's it's hard not to get those little pinholes with just quick spot ends. So I really don't want to lay the weld on it real hard. I'm, I'm afraid I'll shoot down through the wall because the wall of this thing's so thin and and it's pretty easy to do that on, on thin metal with a MIG welder. So I think I'm going to give it a try like that. The worst I've done is wasted my time. So I got that power steering cylinder welded up and put back on. And some of you are probably thinking, well, crazy, why would you do that? Number one, I don't know anything about this tractor really, so... It's best to just probably patch that thing up, get it on the tractor, and see if it'll start and run around. I know the clutch acts like it's froze up, so that's definitely gonna be a challenge. Might end up having to split the thing to fix that, which I hope not, so. Right now, it's all about minimize investment until you can get it at least running. I don't even have the fuel filter on it right now. I have to buy one of those. Borrowing a battery out of our sawmill. Just got the starter put back on. And I shot some WD-40 back in the, the clutch housing on the clutch fork to hopefully maybe get that thing to free up. And then we're gonna kick her over and see how she goes. You see, she spins over free. Smells like vinegar. Let me see. That light on. So the engine's free. It sounds like it's making some compression. I don't have any of the spark plugs in it right now. Or I meant not the spark plugs, the glow plug or uh, injectors. So I do have a kit. So I put the I'll put the old injectors back in, clean them up with these little Tesco kits. Put new washers on them and and probably get it put back together in a few days. I'll have to. I'm not sure where I can even find a fuel filter for this thing. The fuel that comes out of it smells real bad, so I definitely don't want to run that 
And probably the one other thing I'll do is I'm probably going to pull this plug right here on the injection pump and drain the injection pump and put new oil in it before I... I'll have to look up see what kind of oil it takes. Probably should have done that before I even spun it over. But first thing first, I want to make sure it would actually turn over with the starter and, and turn over pretty good. So I'm happy with that. And, and we'll go from there. Stay tuned for more.